Hey guys, welcome to my channel and today we are going to talk about parsing strings. So you can get such kind of strings from a user input and what you need to do is to make sure that it's valid according to some syntax rules or grammar rules. So if you always want to know how to evaluate the string and by the way you'd like to share this solution at your next uh, interview, so keep watching this video. So first of all, let's take a look at the task description. We have to write a function that takes a string of braces and determines if the order of the braces is valid. It should be turned true if the string is valid and false if it's invalid. In other words, we get this pair of braces and return true or if one of the braces in the middle of the others, for example, we return false since this order is incorrect. So why do you need to know how to solve these tasks? Actually, the type of this task is quite common and from time to time you might need to evaluate a string or make sure that it's valid according to some business rules. And as a first solution, I'd like to suggest you to implement it a little bit trickier. Let's get started. And to make it a little bit clear, I've decided to provide you some examples. So, the main idea of this solution is that we will replace all of the correct pairs in our string. In this case, at the line number 5, you can see that we have a pair of strings and eventually we will return the empty string, which means that the input string was valid. On the line number 6, it will work exactly the same way. We will replace all of the strings in this string. And again, the output is an empty string, which means that the input string was valid. Last but not least, at the line number 7, you can see that we will be able to replace this pair of braces, but the output will still have a single character, which means that the input string was invalid. So to make this happen, we need to create a while loop and make sure that we don't have these braces and we also don't have these braces in our input string anymore, these ones as well. So the idea of this loop is that we'll be working until we still have a correct pair of braces in it. But to get rid of these braces, we'll replace them with an empty character. Like this. Like this. And like this. So all we need to do is just to return the length of the string that we still have at that moment. And if it's empty, it means that the string was valid, and if it's not, an invalid. Let's take a look how it works. We click test. Hmm, okay. We have index, index, and index. Wait a minute. Oh, my bad. In this case, we need to replace our AND operators with OR operators because otherwise our loop fails. So now we click test. Okay, it works. And we click attempt. Alright, cool. So what I don't really like about this solution is that we still need to replace all of the pair of the string until we'll be able to respond that the input string was valid or invalid. In this case, the complexity of this algorithm is not so great and truth be told, I have another solution would like also to present to you. So working towards the second solution, what I wanted to achieve is to handle this worst case scenario. As you can see, in this string we have lots of braces, but at the second character we already know that the whole string actually is invalid, because this pair of braces is invalid. But unfortunately, we won't be able to respond the result until we complete the replacement of all of the pairs of this string in our first solution. So to make this work as we would like it to work, we need to iterate over our string one way and analyze every and each character. And that's how it will work. So what are we waiting for? <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to have an array which I'm going to put my brace. For example, for our brace or braces. Now I need to know if it's an open brace then in this case, it doesn't make lots of sense for us, since we won't be able to, to answer about the correctness of this string. 
So we just put this one onto our stack or queue. Doesn't matter how you will name it. So now, if it's not an open brace, it means that we need to make sure that it is still correct. I mean, it still organized some pair of the braces with the previous character. And to make this happen, we get the last string, I mean, we get the last brace, and just check that if the last brace was this one, and uh, the current brace is this one. It means that we can continue, because actually it's just a correct pair. Otherwise, if the last one is this, and the current one is this, that's also fine. We implement absolutely the same logic for the last type of our braces. Here we go, we will also continue. And that's the moment of truth actually. That's where we return our false. Because if we fall into this scenario, it means that we met some exceptional condition. I mean, we met some incorrect behavior. And that's where we return our false. However, we still have a scenario where, for example, we have just one character. In this case, our algorithm won't fail and won't jump into this condition. It will just put our base on the array and that's it. So just to handle this scenario, we still need to make sure that the QLAN is now. In this case, if there is a character, it means that the input string was invalid. Well, let's take a look how it works now. So we'll click test. Yep, it works. Click attempt. Alright, perfect. So all in all, this algorithm works as expected goes one way and checks every character and if it's something wrong it fails fast. That's great. What I don't really know is that for example if we'd like to expand our vocabulary and to add a new character we need to expand this if statement and then we need to add another if statement inside here which means that we fail one of the principles of our code. I mean if you'd like to modify it we should not change the code. We should just expand some kind of configuration. And to make this happen, we can create a separate object where we'll hold all of our grammar. So the third solution I'd like to present to you should solve this issue. And to make this happen, we need to define an object. We can call it like matches. Here we'll have all of the correct pairs of our braces. And potentially that's the characters. I mean, that's, that is a list of our valid characters. Okay, cool. Now, when we have our current brace, we can just make sure that it is a key of our object that we've just created. So we can check that if matches of a brace, now, then it's fine. And so now we can see that we have a pair of braces here and we have a pair of braces in our ifs. It means that actually we can just replace it. So we want to make sure that if if the current brace doesn't match with the last brace that we get from our queue, it means that something wrong here and we return just false. And again the line number 16 will still work and it's still relevant for our cases. So let's take a look how it works now. So we click test, yep, we click a tab, nice. Sounds good. So what I really love about this solution is that, for example, if we'd like to expand our grammar, we can just add this character here and here, and that's it. This is the only change that we need to apply into our code to handle a new grammar. That is really awesome, I think. So again, talking about this task, why would you care about it? If you receive this string, it also means that you need to evaluate this expression first until you'll be able to calculate it, right? And again, for example, if you have these parentheses, you can also make sure that they are valid. And if you take a look at your Excel or Google Sheets, you will also be able to realize that there are lots of formulas and again expressions that you can get from your user 
And here is also the point where you need to evaluate your string and to make sure that the grammar is valid, the syntax is valid, and everything is fine. But talking about this arithmetic expression or boolean expression, I need to say that the current solution is not so great and you probably need something more complicated like expression binary tree or shunting your algorithm by adcode the extra. I will add the links to the description below. And again, since this task is quite clear and description is not difficult, I've also actually noticed this one as a part of Amazon interviews. So keep this in mind next time when you will be preparing for your interviews. However, if you'd like to get more information about it and maybe to take a look at the source code or to reuse this functionality in your applications, you can take a look at three NPM packages that are available right now. First of all, it's MassGS. The second one is Mass Expression Evaluator. And the third one is Expert Evil. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this till the end. First of all, I'm waiting for your solutions and comments below and what would you think? We can still improve in my solutions, for example. The second is that I'm waiting you as my subscriber on this channel if you are interested in programming, coding, challenges and all of this stuff. And I'm also waiting for your likes under this video if you like this content. That would be really great for me to know that you appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching and see you soon on my channel next time.